Have you ever dropped an old silver coin and heard that sharp, clear ping? Like a tiny bell echoing through the air? Now try the same with a modern nickel or quarter. Clunk, dull, flat, almost disappointing. It's a small difference, but your ears instantly know something's off. So, what's going on? Why do silver coins ring while nickels clunk, even when they're the same size and shape? Turns out that simple sound reveals a surprising mix of chemistry, physics, and a little bit of history. Let's break it down. Today we're diving into the science behind coin sounds and what your ears are actually picking up right here on History of Simple Things. If you've got coins nearby, do this with me. Drop a pre-1965 US silver coin, like a quarter or dime, onto a hard surface. A plate, a wooden table, even a ceramic tile will work. Hear that clear bell-like tone? It lingers for a second, almost musical. Now try the same with a modern nickel or quarter. The difference isn't your imagination. You're hearing the science of materials at work. Old US coins, the ones that ring, were made of 90% silver. Today's coins, they're mostly cupro nickel, a mix of copper and nickel. And that change in composition makes all the difference. Silver is a dense, elastic metal. When it vibrates, like when it hits a table, it does so in a smooth, controlled way. That's why it rings. The vibrations travel cleanly through the coin, sending high-frequency sound waves into the air. Nickel-based coins? Not so much. Nickel is less elastic, and the internal structure of these alloys is messier. So when they vibrate, they produce muddier, shorter-lived sounds, more of a clank than a chime. So what are you really hearing? When a coin hits something hard, it vibrates. Those vibrations move through the metal and into the air as sound waves. The frequency of those waves determines the pitch. Higher frequency, higher pitch. Silver coins vibrate at higher frequencies than cupro nickel ones. That's partly thanks to something called the modulus of elasticity, which is a fancy way of saying how springy the metal is. Silver snaps back into shape quickly and cleanly, creating tighter, more energetic waves. Nickel and copper alloys, by comparison, absorb more energy internally, so the vibrations are weaker and die off faster. And density matters too. Silver is denser than copper or nickel. That extra density allows it to store more vibrational energy before the motion fades. Imagine bouncing on a tight, heavy trampoline versus a loose, saggy one. Same idea. So not only does silver vibrate better, it vibrates longer. Modern coins might look the same on the outside, but they're not solid like old silver ones. Take the US quarter. It's made like a sandwich. Copper in the middle, nickel on the outside. Those internal layers interrupt vibration flow. Sound waves get scattered inside the coin, which weakens and shortens the tone. Old silver coins, one solid piece of metal. That uninterrupted structure lets vibrations move freely from edge to edge. Just like a guitar string, clean, continuous, resonant. Believe it or not, this difference in sound is so reliable that collectors and metal detectors use it to spot fake coins. There's something called the ping test. You balance a coin on your finger, gently tap it with another coin, and listen. Real silver gives a high, clear ring. Fakes made from cheaper metal sound flat or tinny. Some collectors even use apps that measure the frequency of the ring. If it hits the expected number, you've probably got real silver. So yes, silver coins literally have a signature sound. 
But probably you're asking, why did we stop using silver? Simple reason, it's about the cost. By the 1960s, silver had become too valuable. The metal in the coins was worth more than the coins themselves. Not exactly sustainable if you're a government mint. So in 1965, the U.S. switched to cheaper metals, and most other countries did the same. Silver was reserved for collectors, special editions, and bullion coins. The sound? That beautiful ping? Mostly disappeared from everyday life. But here's something you might not expect. Even beyond the metal itself, other little things can change the way a coin sounds. Take temperature, for example. If a coin is cold, like just out of the freezer cold, it can vibrate slightly differently than one at room temperature. That frozen silver coin? It might actually ring a little sharper, a little more crisp. It's subtle, but real. Then there's wear and tear. A coin that's been passed through hundreds of hands, dropped on sidewalks, jostled in pockets. It might not sing quite like it used to. The tiny nicks, scratches, and surface damage, they disrupt how the vibrations travel, dulling the sound. That's why uncirculated coins, the ones that have barely seen the light of day, often produce the clearest, longest lasting ring. And don't forget the surface you drop it on. Sound needs something solid to bounce off of. Drop a coin on carpet or a soft wooden table and the sound gets swallowed. But drop it on something hard and smooth, like ceramic tile, glass, or even a stone countertop, and you'll hear the full bright tone come to life. It's amazing how many tiny variables shape the sound of something so simple. But your ears notice every time. This idea of material vibration isn't just for coins. Engineers use it when designing tuning forks, bells, musical instruments, even airplane parts. The ability of a material to vibrate in a clean, predictable way is useful in all kinds of technologies. So when you drop a coin, you're not just making noise, you're triggering a tiny physics experiment in your pocket. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.